you live in a dynamic world. Your world is changing from moment to moment. Your world model is being updated from moment to moment. The pattern of cortical column activation, that pattern of information that is your subjective phenomenal world, is updated from moment to moment. And now we kind of understand that sensory information from the environment is used to help direct that update, um, that update process. Um, but clearly your brain isn't kind of just receiving sensory information blindly from moment to moment. Your brain knows something about the structure of the world. It knows what kind of sensory information to anticipate. You know, as I said before, when you open your eyes, you're not constantly surprised at what you're, see what you're seeing. Your brain doesn't have to constantly kind of work out what's there. Most of the time, your brain actually has a very good idea of not only of what it's seeing at, at this moment in time, uh, but also what it expects to see in the next moment in the future. So clearly the brain has learned something about the structure uh, of, of the world. It knows something about the structure of the world. And, and that world structure is actually encoded in the, the connections between cortical columns. So these connections are kind of have been sculpted over a number of different timescales, so evolutionary timescales, uh, but also um, from the moment you're dragged screaming from the womb, uh, your brain is being flooded with sensory information, and that is actually helping your brain to, to, to develop and sculpt its model of the world, and it does that uh, throughout your life. And so by the time you are a functioning adult, like myself, um, your brain has a pretty good, pretty good idea of what's going on and is able to uh, not only receive sensory information, but kind of filter sensory information and predict sensory information and, and anticipate a new, new sen sensory information. So in, in this video, what I want to do is, is give you uh, at least a conceptual understanding of how the brain uh, learned um, the structure of the world, how the brain learned to anticipate patterns of in information that it would receive from the environment from moment to moment. So for this we'll need to think again about connections. Um, now of course we're talking about synaptic connections. In uh, future units we will look at connections between columns in a little bit more detail. Um, so don't worry too much about uh, the detailed structure of columns or, or, or exactly which kind of neurons these connections are coming from or going to, but simply that we are talking about uh, synaptic connections uh, and that um, these are the connections that form between uh, columns and allow um, columns to influence each other. They allow information to flow from column to column. So when co one column is activated, um, it can influence, either activate or inactivate columns uh, to which it is connected. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Okay, so here, this is the familiar picture, just to remind yourself of what we're talking about here. Uh, this is our synapse. These are our synaptic connections, of course. This is our uh, synapse, or this is our particular our synaptic cleft. And the connection, of course, is uh, this chemical connection between um, the, the presynaptic and the post-synaptic post, uh, um, neuron. So let's look at it. Um, particularly in the context of columns. So, so we, we've been drawing columns kind of like this with, with connections thus, um, however they might be connected. Um, but from the side, of course, you know, it would look something more, again, this is tricky. Um, so we have, you know, columns that are packed together, and there are connections between them. So there's some kind of synaptic connections. Uh, and as I, as I said, again, we will look at this uh, in a lot more detail in, uh, in future units, but there are connections and connect connections going both ways as well. Um, so these are the connections that we're looking uh, to understand uh, the development and establishment of. Okay, so let me introduce you to a 
a completely unrealistic type of a set of cortical columns that are completely 100% um, disconnected from each other. So they have no influence on each other. Uh, and currently they are completely disconnected from the environment. They're not receiving any information from the environment and their activity is completely random. So which columns are active at any point in time uh, is completely random, which means that the, 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 this set of 16 cortical columns is moving from state to state completely randomly. Um, it's not building any kind of coherent or useful or functional model of the world at all. Uh, so this really takes us back to this really really hypothetical, completely primitive type of and totally unrealistic uh, type of brain. But it helps to illustrate, um, hopefully, the way that the brain learns something about the structure of, of the world and the structure of patterns of sensory information that it will receive. Okay, so Here's our set of 16 cortical columns uh, that are completely uh, disconnected and they will move, as I said, randomly between states. However, now let's introduce some sensory information. So this is a pattern of sensory information that uh, comes from the environment and it is going to activate certain uh, cortical columns. So let's say it activates these cortical columns and let's say that this pattern of information is received re repetitively, repeatedly from the environment. What's going to happen? Well, there is a principle in neuroscience that neurons that fire together wire together. Um, and what the brain will do um, as, it, as it repeatedly receives this same pattern of information from the environment is it will form connections between those columns. And that will mean that even in the absence of this sensory information, uh, these columns, when this column, for example, is activated, it will tend to activate these columns because they're now connected to each other. So what's happened? The brain has essentially learned a pattern of information from the environment. It's sampled um, this pattern of sensory information from the environment and it's learned that this is a pattern of information that seems to occur a lot. Um, so it's, it's learned that particular pattern of information by forming these connections between uh, these columns. Now let's continue. So there, here is another pattern of information from the environment, a different pattern of information which activates a different set of cortical columns, let's say these cortical columns, and again, as this particular pattern of information is repeatedly uh, received from the environment, uh, the um, columns, uh, sorry, connections between uh, these cortical columns will be um, generated. So again, the brain has learned to, um, has learned something about the structure of sensory information that it is likely to receive from the environment. Uh, it has, of course, also learned to actually generate that pattern of information because, as I said before, even in the absence of um, this pattern of information from the environment, the brain is able to construct this pattern of information by activating these columns because these are now uh, connected to each other. So, over time, um, and again, this is very different time scales, we won't go into too much detail, about the different timescales involved. Uh, but over time, uh, your brain will sculpt its connectivity based upon the patterns of sensory information that it is receiving from the environment. So over time, the brain learns about uh, sensory information. It learns, and from that, essentially learns uh, something about the structure of the environment. In other words, what kind of sensory information is it likely to receive from the environment? Um, and of course, this also means that the brain is able to predict um, certain patterns of information. Uh, and we will see shortly why prediction is so very, very uh, important. So the difference then between this very primitive brain here, this kind of completely disconnected, and this um, how we, should we call it, evolved brain, is that this 
primitive brain knows nothing about the environment. Um, it knows nothing about sensory information. It has no idea uh, what patterns of sensory information it is likely to encounter from moment to moment. Whereas this evolved brain here does. It's received, uh, it's sampled sensory information from the environment and that has allowed it to sculpt its connectivity to generate its own patterns of activation uh, that will allow it to, um, in a sense, to predict the kind of sensory information that it is likely to receive, to sculpt its own model of um, the environment that allows, you know, that generates a functional, um, useful uh, model of the world that works uh, from moment to moment. So, your own brain knows a lot about the structure of the environment. Um, not because it has direct access to the environment as such, but it doesn't. Your brain, your brain only has access to the information that is, it is receiving from moment to moment, from the, the sensory information that it receives via the sensory apparatus uh, and that is passed to it um, as these, these patterns of action potentials uh, that are received from the sensory apparatus. Your brain never really has direct access to the world, but using these, these patterns of sensory information over time, your brain is able to construct uh, a model of, um, of the environment that, that, that seems to work. You know, the brain can never know whether the model is kind of correct or true in any sense. Um, but you know, does this is this model a useful model? Does it allow your brain to make predictions about the future? Does it allow your brain to to navigate the environment, to distinguish between predator and prey, and that kind of thing? Um, so, so that's really what this model is all about. It's it's it, 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 it's it's a functional model that your brain has learned to to construct. Um, with the intention of, of basically giving you the best chance of, of surviving. Um, but there's, there's certainly no yardstick by which we can, we can measure truth in, in, in this model. So, so, so don't kind of misconstrue these ideas that, that somehow the brain is, is learning to construct the truest model of reality. That's simply not the case. It's learning to construct the most functional uh, and useful model uh, of reality, the model that works. And it does this. Um, by sculpting its connectivity over time, um, and, and that is achieved by sampling sensory information uh, from the environment. Now, of course, now you have a very good model of the environment. It works. You know, you're a functioning human being in this in this world, um, and as you go about your your daily business, so to speak, um, your model generally doesn't let you down. Um, and your brain is so good at constructing this model that even when you, you go to sleep at night, when you start dreaming, your brain is actually constructing the same model. Now, we saw in the last video that sensory information tends to guide um, the model. It doesn't kind of construct the model. The model isn't built from sensory information. Um, the model is built from information um, generated by, by the brain. Um, sensory information only, only guides it. So when you're dreaming, what actually happens is the, the parts of your brain, particularly the primary sensory areas that normally receive information from the outside world, that receive these patterns of sensory information, stop functioning. Uh, and so information doesn't get into the brain from, from the environment. Uh, however, um, your brain is perfectly capable of, uh, of constructing a model of reality that is indistinguishable from it. And in fact, it, it's the same model. Um, when you're dreaming, you are, the world you experience is the same model that you're experiencing when you're awake. The difference is that it can become much more fluid and unpredictable and unstable simply because your brain doesn't have that, um, that guidance from, from sensory information. Um, so in a way, your waking life is kind of like a waking dream, but it's it's tightly constrained uh, by uh, sampling of sensory information from the environment. Now, in the next video, I want to look. Um, you know, I, I said before that we no longer really think that sensory information drives this model. Um, 
Uh, in other words, we don't think that sensory information is kind of selecting specifically, you know, each state of the cortex from moment to moment as, as the model updates from moment to moment. Uh, but actually that the, the brain is somehow based upon what it knows about the world, what it's learned about the world, the structure of the world uh, by sculpting its patterns of connectivity, as we've just discussed, um, is actually kind of predicting or trying to predict sensory information it has this model in your head, in your brain, and it's based upon this model. It's trying to predict the patterns of sensory information that it will receive next. This will all make sense in the next video. So please, let's do that now.